Parna Nancherla. Thank you, guys. Oh. We did it. We're all here. Oh. You're here. You're here. I didn't think you'd come, but there you are. So I, I made a recent realization in my life that I'd like to share with you guys. There is no way to pick up pills that you've spilled on the ground without looking like a total human red flag. <laughs> you know, there's just no way to be like, oh, <laughs> this is what I meant to do and everything is going great. Like, as soon as it happens, you're always like, huh, I'm so sorry. I need these. Mama's medicine. <laughs> like, it immediately turns into a sad one-woman show that nobody agreed to attend. No, I, I do take a healthy diet of pills, but they are prescribed. Uh, though, though I would say, you know, pills, they're a great anytime snack. They, um, they come through in that way. But no, I suffer from depression. Uh, it's a great way to start off a set, you know. Uh, sorry to go blue right away, but it's true. I... No, I, I, I've had it my whole life, and you know, it's like a lot of times I'll feel sad for no reason. But then I'll remember some of the reasons, you know? I'm like, this actually makes a lot of sense. This adds up. There are uh, certain types of weather that are better for depressives. Like, I love it when it rains. Reminds me why I got in the whole sad game, you know? Keeps me grounded. Whenever it's like pouring outside, as a, as a sad person, you can turn to any random optimist on the street and just be like, hey, you're in my world now. <laughs> yeah, I, I relate to people who have self-doubt. I, I have a lot of anxiety. Um, don't be mistaken by the sassy drag queen stage persona. A, I know it's confusing, but... Yeah, I have a lot of anxiety. I don't know. I feel like it's weirder to not have anxiety than to have it, because I feel like if you're not scared, you're not paying attention, you know? Like, I feel like if you open a newspaper today, skim maybe three headlines, you're just like, seems cool. It's like, what? Everything's on fire. <laughs> Even the newspaper is on fire. Like, what are you so chill about? And you know, sometimes when you tell people you have anxiety, they're always like, well, you know, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. It's like, okay, have you checked out some of Fear's work? It's like pretty much churning out solid gold hits. Making some great points, rarely misfires. And like, if you don't have anxiety, the way I would describe it is like there's an edgy improv group in your brain. And it just needs like a one word suggestion. to spin like countless scenarios that no one's comfortable with. <laughs> like the whole time you're just like, when will this show be over? I just came to be supportive. <laughs> None of these thoughts have a future. <laughs> and you know, I have all kinds of anxiety. I have uh, social anxiety, which is ironically one of the most relatable kinds. Um, it's a little weird. Sometimes mine will get so bad, I can't even talk to babies without getting self-conscious. Yeah, like the whole time I'm just like, oh, what if I'm not an interesting shape or color, you know? It's like, make a fist, try to relate. Take out your keys, meet them on their level. Yeah, social interaction is terrifying. I also hate this one. I hate when um, you're going in for the handshake but the other person is going in for the fist bump, and then you realize you're in front of a mirror and you don't know who you are anymore. <laughs> Last summer, I got catcalled, uh, which is not, you know, a cause for celebration, but I'm just not someone who gets catcalled a lot. I'm not sad about it, but I was thinking why that might be the case. 
I think uh, some of it might be that a lot of times I'll wear an astronaut helmet around the city. <laughs> that definitely hurts my numbers. I also think it's like my general energy when I walk around, like my vibe is a little bit like, are you my mother? Like that is, that is the message I'm putting out into the universe. You know, it's like a hint of orphan. So cat callers are usually like, eh, she's already scared. We'll get the next one. <laughs> Whatever their inner monologue is. I'm sure it's darker than that. <laughs> But yeah, I got catcalled last summer and it was weird just because of how elaborate it was. Like there was a guy sitting a couple stoops down from the building I live in and we don't normally have catcallers on my block. So it was like already a special day. And then I realized later he didn't even live on my block, which made me think like, is catcalling like jury duty? Where you just get an address in the mail and that's your assignment? Or the city's like, we just gotta make sure women feel objectified fairly over all the, you know, different neighborhoods. So every four years, you're like, okay, civic duty fulfilled. So anyway, he was sitting there. I wasn't expecting anything. I walked by him, and then he just goes, hey, sweetie, look at you, looking all beautiful and shit. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like classic line. You can't argue with that. Um, hitting all the bases. It's like time tested, mother not approved. <laughs> I didn't say anything, like I didn't know how to react. Like I have barely developed a script for when people I know are like, hey Aparna, how's it going? <laughs> so it's like anything outside of that. It's like, I can't, I'm not ready. I'll never be ready. So I walk by him and then he keeps talking to me. He's just like, oh, I see you. I was like, okay, great. Um, <laughs> I think that's the baseline of what we've established here. We both see each other. Thank you for naming it. And I keep walking and he's just like, there you go. I was like, is he just gonna keep narrating my day? Very unimaginatively. And then I walked another block. He was still yelling at me. I couldn't even hear him at this point. I turned around, he's kind of waving his arms. I was like, you know what? Maybe he's just workshopping today, you know? <laughs> It's not even what he's saying, it's just he's trying to run some new angles, keeping his game sharp. And then I had coffee with a friend, I was gone maybe an hour, I turned around, came back, he was sitting in the exact same place. I was like, great, this is my nightmare. Uh, maybe he won't say anything. I walked by him again and he just goes, skinny bones, is that you? Which, you know, was such a departure from his previous work. <laughs> it was like a total genre shift. It was like while I was gone, he had moved into a new period as an artist. <laughs> that it totally caught me off guard. And my first impulse was to laugh, but I was like, no, you can't give him anything. Even though I will be honest, he did make my college eating disorder blush. You know, I was like, thank you. It's too much, please. No. Uh, <laughs> I was like, nope, and I sort of scurried by him. And then he was just like, skinny bones. <laughs> like we had this shared history that I wasn't acknowledging. He was like, you remember me, we go back at least 45 minutes. Don't deny your roots. And I was just like, nope, nope, nope. And I sort of like ran, walked up the steps to my apartment. As I went in the door, I just heard one last sad resigned, skinny bones. <laughs> It was like a full arc, you know, as a character. I was like, we all went on a journey down that block emotionally. I've also, um, I've also been getting into the internet. I don't know if you guys have been. It's pretty fun. Uh, yeah, I got my AOL CD. I'm finally on there, but <laughs> the internet is tricky. I feel like you click on a link and then you wake up five years later with a beard and you're like, what happened? My latest Achilles heel on the internet is list articles. Uh, listicles, I believe, is the time-saving term. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are familiar with them, but it, the whole point, they're known as clickbait. Like, the whole point is just to get you to click on the link. They just want those hits. And there's a lot of sites that specialize in them. There's like BuzzFeed, HuffPo, Third Sight is doing great work. Uh, <laughs> 
But, you know, ever, at first they started out normal in terms of being enticing. Like, a typical one m might be something like 12 actresses before they were famous. You'd be like, oh, well, I'm not famous. Let's relate. <laughs> or it'd be like, 37 puppies, so cute, you'll be mad. And you're like, I'm already mad. Bring it on. <laughs> And then I feel like they ran out of all the normal ones and they slowly started getting weirder because they have to put up like 70,000 a day. It's a valuable job. So you, you would start getting ones that were a little odd, like 51 burritos without makeup. <laughs> Guess there has to be some airbrushing involved. <laughs> or it'd be like 300 ways to prove you're real. <laughs> Am I real? Huh, better check a hundred of those. I can't wait till they run out of all the weird ones and it just comes back full circle to mundane again. And it's just like, the Ten Commandments! <laughs> yes, I, mm, guess I need a refresher. Or just like, two birds. Is that even a list? Ah, mad again. Still have to look. <laughs> My problem with dating is like, you have to show up and be fun. It's like, what are you, a king? <laughs> like, you should just be glad that I'm real. It's just a lot to ask. And you know, I've tried, uh, I've tried internet dating. That's big now. Uh, I've tried a couple sites. I've tried uh, Match. I've tried OK Cupid. Uh, I, I, I spent a good month on Yelp, you know? Like, I feel like I've <laughs> gone the distance, but I, I even had to think outside the box this past year. Like, I, I got asked out over Facebook, uh, which in and of itself isn't that interesting, but the thing is, it was someone I didn't know, and they sent me a message. They were just like, oh, I saw you do stand-up at a show. Uh, I thought you were really funny. Let's go out. And normally I'd be like, no, but I was at a vulnerable point in my life. And I was also like, you know what? He didn't even ask. He just decided. Like, I respect that decisiveness in a man. And it's also like, what is that expression? Yodo, you know, you only date occasionally. So <laughs> you have to take the opportunities when they present themselves. Uh, the one thing that was weird about him right off the bat was that his profile picture was just a Santa emoji. <laughs> I know, it's the right reaction. It's like right away there's a slight chance he doesn't have a face. Uh, or that his face is in fact a Santa emoji. And it's like, you know, I'm open-minded, but it's gonna be a discussion eventually. Uh, so I had my friend Google him and she was like, no, he checks out, he has a face, you're good to go. Yeah, I don't like to Google people before the first date. I'm kind of old fashioned. I feel like some things you should save for marriage. Uh, but she was like, no, he checks out, go on the date. So we made plans. I believe I picked the place. Like I tried to pick a bar where it was like, if I go missing, people will be like, at least she had a good time before she left. <laughs> yeah, at least four stars. So we met up and first impressions I have to say were great. He was tall, he smelled good, he had a face, triple threat. Everything matched up, and then we sat down, he bought us drinks, we started talking, and then one of the first things he said where it was just like, red flag meter alerted. One of the first things out of his mouth, he was just like, uh, something you should know about me, I'm really big on honesty, I just like telling it how it is. It's like, okay, who opens with that as a human? Who like right out of the gate is just like, listen, you're gonna hear some stuff. Uh, <laughs> And it's also like honesty on a first date? No thanks. <laughs> like call me old fashioned, but I feel like dating is like health insurance. Like you wait until you're accepted in as a member before you start revealing all your pre-existing conditions. <laughs> yes, feel free. <laughs> Like, it feels like, you know, you wait until year five before you're like, oh, by the way, I have diabetes and another family. Happy anniversary! 
But it was like, night is young. Let's just see where it goes. Um, we started talking. We didn't have a lot in common. He was like, I work in finance. I was like, I have no money. Uh, we were hitting a few walls. And then maybe halfway through the night, there was a lull in the conversation. And then he was just like, you know, I'm actually pretty funny. I could be a comedian if I wanted. Oh, oh, wow. You guys reacted with the perfect combination of uh, quiet horror and disgust. <laughs> and you are not prepped. Uh, first of all, that's not how being funny works. You don't have to give someone a heads up that you're funny. You don't have to be like, oh, I forgot to tell you, I'm funny. So you've been missing a lot of cues on your end. Some of your facial expressions aren't reading. But yeah, and it's also so condescending to be like, oh, you know that thing you do that you work pretty hard at and made a lot of sacrifices for? I've thought about doing it, but uh, <laughs> I'm too good. I'm too good! It's so condescending. You wouldn't do that for any other career. You wouldn't be like, oh, check this out. I've seen the moon a couple times. I'm pretty sure I'm space material. <laughs> like, it is as ridiculous as saying that. But at that point, if I remember correctly, a uh, cockroach ran across our table. Yes, I know, so it was a very nice act break. Uh, it, it should have been foreshadowing, I just didn't pick up on it at that point. Because after that, the date completely derailed, and he, he just turned into an Amazon algorithm where he's just like, you might also not like the next thing I'm gonna say. <laughs> because then we really ran out of everything to talk about. Like, I feel like the date itself stood up and left the room and we were still sitting there for some reason. It was like a fundraiser at that point. <laughs> like, I feel like we discussed the levels of our waters. We're like, oh, you drink more, that's great for you. It shows in your skin. Like, it was really bottom of the barrel. And then, circling back to his original statement, he was just like, you know, I should tell you this. I actually only friended you on Facebook because you're an Indian comedian. He was Indian as well. And I was like, okay. And he was like, yeah, I just wanted to support an Indian artist. I didn't actually think you were that funny. I was just like, Wh why? why are you? Why are you? Why are you saying this out loud <laughs> to me? I feel like there's so many other people you could say this to. There's an internet specifically for these types of grievances, you know? <laughs> and I feel like I, I, I just started to make the face of someone whose like, eyes are bleeding, but there's no blood. I was just like, why? <laughs> why do you bring this plague on my people? <laughs> and then he waited a second, and then he was just like, that was a joke. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, it immediately reached the level of outrage of someone ripping off two monocles at the same time. Like, I was so mad. <laughs> it's like taking off wigs I wasn't wearing, just like, sir, how dare you insult me with my craft in front of my children? I was like pointing at my coat, like it didn't make sense anymore. And then he was just like, that was a joke, do something, react. And I didn't, I just sat there, I like physically left my body. <laughs> and then he reached across the table and he forced my mouth into a smile. <laughs> he, he smile violated me. He smiled me. Like, my brain ran out of reactions in that moment. It was just like, error, error, situation does not compute, patriarchy overload. <laughs> it's like women get mad when they're told to smile on the street, but to forcibly be smiled? Like, I was mad at myself in that moment for when he, like, touched my face, not having it just melt off and be like, now you're cursed. You failed the test. There never was a date. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the rest of the evening can best be summed up from a quote from the movie Titanic, which I had to copy down. Uh, but you guys will see why it fits. Okay, here it is. Afterward, the 700 people in the boats, that's me, <laughs> had nothing to do but wait. 
Wait to die. <laughs> Wait to live. Wait for an absolution that would never come. Uh, so we are engaged. I just thought it was so cute how we met. Uh, guys, that's gonna be it for me. Thank you so much. Thank you, you've been really great. Thank you.